So we're back on the PCL82 amplifier project. It's hooked up to the power supply, B+. Um, heating voltage is coming from another lab power supply. It has a speaker and a radio output transformer connected to it. And it's fed via this crude adapter here from this cassette player. And if I turn this on, and actually here, it works, it works fine. If you hear this buzz, this is probably from the cassette, or the cassette player. Because um, this is an extremely cheap cassette player I use to test my audio gear with. And it, if you put plug headphones into this, it sounds terrible. So, yeah, I say this works for now. Um, let's take some measurements on this, feed it from signal generator, see what it puts out. And... Then we can actually have a look at how we hooked this up to um, this power supply we designed in the last video. I'll turn this off now. Um, put it in a case and then finish up the project. I know this has been dragging on for a long time and I think I said in the last video, in this one I was going to design all of the case and just uh, put it in a box and be done with it. But yeah, it needed some further tweaks and um, the last 10% of a project usually costs you 90% of the time at least in my experience it is like that um, so let's hook it up to the signal generator let's replace this speaker here with a load and um, let's see what it looks like on an oscilloscope Right, let's have a look at our extremely sophisticated testing setup here so the power connections are still the same I've got the signal generator coming from here, hooked up into the input. Now I've got the first channel of the scope coming off the input here, going into the scope. And then I've got the second channel of the scope hooked up to this um, 8 ohm dummy load. This is just 6 46 uh, ohm resistors in parallel. And it has um, two of these banks, so you can simulate... 4 ohm, 8 ohm, 16 ohm. This is quite, uh, quite convenient actually. So I'll place the camera over by the scope and we'll have a look at the waveform. Okay, so here we are at the scope and the top trace over here is the signal coming from the signal generator. And that's the multimeter switching itself off in the background. Um, I've got about a kilohertz signal going into this and on the bottom trace you can see what the amplifier is putting out. Um, this is the top trace is 10 millivolt 10 millivolts per division and the channel 2 trace here is 2 volts per division so we've got 2, 4, six eight say nine or ten volts on the output with uh, the eight ohm load that is connected to this this would give us about 10 ish watts which would be uh, absolutely ex absolutely acceptable um, I wouldn't mind that at all the problem that I see here is this waveform here I should get my pointy stick um, this looks this looks fairly good. The bottom here, this doesn't look very good. This, um, it doesn't reproduce it quite right. So this is way too flat. It looks like, a, to me, this looks like a biasing issue, actually. Um, and, I mean, I couldn't really hear it on the, uh, when the music was playing, but... This is definitely something we should look into. So I might have to change the component values around a little bit again. Um, but I'd probably do that after I build the power supply because um, this is going to change with the voltage that I apply and I can probably demonstrate that by just changing the voltage up here a little.
Actually, this doesn't really seem to affect it that much. Although I had the impression that it sounded much better with lower voltage. But even with the high voltage, we still have the problem that it's um, that it's not reproducing it here quite right. You can actually see if I change the output of the signal generator here. Problem is this potentiometer for the amplitude in my signal generator is a little scratchy. You can see with lower frequency this gets even worse. Um, ignore that kink there. Um, the point is it's, it's getting worse. So I think what I should do next is actually build up the power supply, um, test, see if that works right. And after that, go uh, back in and maybe change the bias around um, to a point where it doesn't do that anymore. Okay, so here's where we are. I hooked up a transformer and um, basically the line voltage comes in here, goes through here into the heater segment, goes out here, comes into the transformer, goes out here into the bridge rectifier uh, to the amplifier and we're still measuring here we're still feeding in the same signal um, this is a 220 to uh, 150 step down transformer so this gives around 200 um, volts DC with my line voltage that's a little higher than what this is rated for and um, the rectify, uh, rectifier square root of 2 and everything so um, this is a very good voltage level for this uh, tube to run at in my experience um, and I mean I can turn it on and we'll have to wait a second till it heats up and you can actually hear the the one kilohertz test tone that I'm putting in there because it will um will vibrate the transformer and it will vibrate the tube everything will vibrate vibrate with that frequency even though there's no speaker hooked up but the interesting thing is now with this setup we don't have that awful distortion anymore that we had before um I think this wasn't as much due to bias but it was due to the voltage being just um, a little high for what this tube is supposed to run at and also I was pushing it pretty hard with the signal generator so now um, into an 8 ohm load it's producing about 6 or 7 volts and it's a perfect sine wave feed in a perfect sine wave and I'll put a picture up here of what that looks like um, because I took a picture when I was measuring it earlier. So, I'd say, electronically, this is finally at a point um, where it's working. Which is great. It's, uh, I know it took a while, but we're getting there. So, next video, case design, um, hooking everything up doing a final test and then we're done with this.